Hey guys, Jimmy Pokemon here. With a few signing events becoming really, really popular and everyone going to get cards signed and then the resale market also being incredibly strong, um, I figured I'd make a quick video kind of showing you guys um, how I prep for a signing event that I'm gonna go to, how I'm gonna get cards signed, um, things I'll do just to be safe, and then also, uh, you know, just things to be aware of um, for any signing events in the future. So there are two pretty big signing events coming up soon. Um, this weekend in Orlando, Florida, um, Harada is actually going to sign uh, at Pokemon Regionals. This is kind of like a sanctioned event. It's at a, you know, Pokemon branded event. And so there's very limited things that um, can occur there. They're, they're very strict about how they can handle um, certain processes. And then the next weekend in New York City Times Square, Harada is also going to be another event. And this is a private event. And so um, the things that, that you can get signed are also very strict and very limited. Um, and, and you have to adhere really to kind of the rules that the Pokemon company has set out. Um, but um, the Pokemon regionals, I feel like, can even be a little bit more strict just because it is at a Pokemon event per se. And so I'll talk through both. Um, keep in mind they both are public, so anyone and everyone can show up to these um, and, and see the, the, the illustrator. Um, at this event, you're probably going to wait in line. Um, hopefully I can get some autos done on that Friday, and I'll probably put my name back in that same Friday, and I may not even get through again, even through Sunday. So the line on this day is going to roll over, you know, day after day. And at this event, all the tickets are actually sold out. Um, but you can still go to the event and see um, uh, Miss Serrata. And she has some artwork for sale um, that she's done that is not Pokemon. So um, kind of keep that in mind. Um, so a lot of things kind of at this event will just be kind of about the illustrator herself and kind of her private um, sort of drawings and stuff. And she's doing Shikishis at this event too, which is pretty cool. Uh, but the tickets are sold out, so you won't be able to get an auto at this event. Uh, but you will be able to go and, and buy some artwork she's already done. So one of the things I also just kind of want to start with is just maybe to show you guys some cards that I'm going to get signed. Um, I actually have maybe like maybe 20, 25 cards total, just as if like if best case scenario that I can get signed. Um, I'm hopeful at this event to get like maybe eight cards signed. And you know none of these are for sale. They'll all just be from a personal collection. Uh, but you got a Reverse Law Gengar. You got a Cosmos, kind of Gyarados there. And this is like my number one stack. Like basically the, the cards I really, really want to get signed. So she's really known for maps and drawing things out. This Battle Frontier is really, really popular one. Um, she also did, it's kind of like the same artwork, but it is in Power Keepers and Emerald. So if I get both of these, that'd be kind of cool. I actually don't know for sure if she's going to do sketches at the Orlando event. Um, but if you can just get the name and, and stuff, I think that'd be great too. So you got these two. I won't set those on the top loaders. Uh, you got Apricorn Forest. It's one of the rares she did from Aquapolis. So again, another map. Mirage Stadium. Underground Lake. Underseas Ruins. This is absolutely one of my favorite cards um, for the longest time. I actually didn't even realize Harada had done this. And so to get this signed by her would be incredible. Probably my number one card I want to get signed by her would, would be this. Um, I, I'd say for now. And if you notice, all these cards are graded. And, and so, you know, why do we grade cards to get a guaranteed sort of condition or at least a really good range in the condition? Um, I bought most of these between like 30 to $80, I'd say. And some of these are, I graded myself. And so tonight I'm actually going to crack all these out of cases, get her out to sign them. And don't feel like you have to send these back in to get graded right away. Um, if they're for your personal collection, get them graded in five years. If you're going to spend a thousand bucks on a trip to Orlando or New York City, like, don't feel the pressure just to put the money right back in and get them signed. Um, you can sit on them for a period of time and then get them, get them authenticated or just keep them loose in your binder. Like, that's totally okay. You don't have to have things in a PSA case. And a lot of times if you do, you know, sometimes it's for protection stuff. But at the same time, like, it's usually it's for resale. Let's be honest here. And um, a lot of these artists, they really don't want their items to be signed. They really don't want their items to be resold. So if you do go to an event, I would try to keep in mind the number one thing is going to be the experience of the artists themselves, to get to meet them, to see them, um, to like watch them actually write your name and, and spend time with you to give you that sort of piece. Like that's, that's so incredible. I remember with Arita when I got something signed by him, it was like, oh, cool, getting the guy that did the Charizard. That's cool. That's cool. Then you get in line, you get closer, you get closer, you get closer. And the next thing I know, I was like, oh, my gosh, like, like this is childhood coming back. This is like Mitsuhiro Arita. Like he's – it just – it just becomes surreal when you get so close to the artist. It's amazing. So I want to spend time kind of talking about this card. Um, you actually have the three birds in there. <laughs> really, really cool art. Again, this is Sky Ridge Reverse. And I think this would probably be maybe one of my second best card I want to get signed. Um, so I'm really excited for this. 
And I guess I could take a pause here. The Orlando event, when you go through the line, you're guaranteed five autographs. So you get five autographs when you go through the line just once. And so it's going to take a long time for that line to go through. So I really think I'm only going to go through the line once. The Orlando event also has a live drawing um, where she's going to spend two hours in the beginning. Um, th that's sold out. It's already been pre-sold. Uh, but those of you that are lucky enough to get tickets on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, um, I think from 9 to 11 Eastern each of these days, she's actually going to do kind of a, a live sort of drawing. And if you got tickets to that, you get another three autos. So by going to Orlando, I'm guaranteed basically to get eight autos, and I could maybe get 13, you know, so I got some extras just in case. But I'm really only expecting to get maybe eight autos going. Uh, this is another card from Sky Ridge, kind of cool. This is actually the only holographic Watsy card that she had signed, um, and I just have the reverse hall version. I don't even have the holographic version. Um, and so I also want you guys to notice, uh, we'll kind of look here, you got the birds, <laughs> the Zapdos and, and Moltres there. It's kind of from that other picture. So Skyridge, a lot of the artwork actually blends, which is kind of cool. And I think her ancient ruins kind of like Skyridge piece is just incredible. Uh, how it all kind of connects. That's why I want to get like a Nidoran sign over like maybe like another Gyarados or something. I think it's crazy. And notice how I'm getting a lot of high grades. So it always baffles me um, when people get like really, really beat up cards signed. I'm like... Maybe it's just access to cards at the time. You didn't know the artist was going to be there. It's like if you just pay a little bit more up front for a high grade, you know, like an extra 20 bucks to get a high grade um, in some cases. Like just to get a high grade auto is just so much more valuable down the road. E even if you're never going to sell it, even just for just building your own personal collection. Like, okay, like you can feel good about having like a higher value card like in your collection. You may, like it almost make, makes a trip more worth it. Um, even if that card never transacts, even if you just hold it for good. It's another Nidoran here. And so I've uh, got some backups as well too. Um, hopefully everything will go smooth. And so I guess maybe some tips, like if you guys are gonna like actually go up there and get a card signed, I try to like actually write something out here. And so, like, you have to think about trying to make this as easy as possible, communicate with the artist. Um, I don't know how well Harada speaks English, but every artist speaks Japanese, and they speak Japanese really, really well. They'll have a translator there to help kind of with that process. But imagine you have 500 people in a line, you get up there, and you have 10 or 20 seconds to really interact with the artist, and then maybe another minute or so while they sign everything. And so, for the Orlando event, everything actually has to be in English. You can't get any Japanese um, like to yourself in Japanese, it has to be like your name in English. And I'll, I'll kind of show you guys that here in a second. But if you want to write like directions in Japanese or you're like a thank you message in Japanese, like, you know, hey, Miss Arata, you're an inspiration to me. I absolutely love your Aquapolis, you know, um, Undersea Ruins artwork. And you wrote that in Japanese, she could read that really quickly and she'll appreciate kind of the effort you took to write something in Japanese, even though you don't speak Japanese. So again, this isn't like forgetting the card sign. This is just a way to tell the artist thank you and to communicate with them. And it's something that I would consider doing just in that limited time that you have. Okay, so make it as easy as possible. It's almost like think about when you're shipping a card, guys, and the person's going to open the package. How do you make it as easy as possible for that person to open the package? How do you make it as easy as possible for Miss Harada to actually sign the cards the way that you want them to be signed um, within the constraints of the event? So another big tip here, um, some people learn this the hard way, do not sleeve that card right away. You get five cards signed, you get three cards signed, whatever have you, that ink is wet, do not put it in a sleeve, you will smear it. Um, even the best pens out there, you will smear it. You have to be super, super careful. Uh, just, I mean, I would literally fan it. You can hold it, you can set it down. Um, you know, maybe don't fan it right away, just kind of set it down. I've, I've held cards out for an hour before. Most people say 10 minutes is probably the max. You need to like leave a card sitting out for a sleeve. Um, but again, if I'm going to take the trip to Orlando, New York City, and I'm going to like get, you know, such an icon to sign a card, I don't mind waiting an hour. Like, you know, I just wait in that line for 10 hours. I don't mind waiting an hour to get signed. And then be safe. And so the line's going to get really busy really early. And so if you get there at 9 o'clock, I probably wouldn't even expect to get an, a card sign on Friday. You know, so I'd get there really early in the morning. And you want something to kind of keep you occupied. So I know for at least the Orlando event, there is an SMS queue where once they get your name, you can kind of go around the event. You can wander around. You could leave. You could do whatever you want. I know a couple of us may go to a theme park on Saturday. Um, just get under the assumption that the line's going to be so long, we may not even get through again. And so um, just kind of something to keep you occupied. But, you know, you really want to be safe. So if you're out there at 3 in the morning waiting in line and you've got an iPad on you and you've got a stack of cards on you, like, be safe. Like, like it, just keep that in mind. You're going to be with other people, a lot of good people around. 
but but not everyone has the best intentions and, and you really want to just protect yourself um, I may actually bring a chair with me, um, like a little fold-out chair, just because we're going to be there like 10 hours. I, I think I'm going to download a movie to watch in line or something, so I'm, I'm thinking about it. And I reiterated this earlier, but number one, it's about the experience. Like, hands down, it's about the experience. It's about meeting the artist. It's about that memory. It's about something you can never let go of. I do feel a little weird about getting, like, this many cards signed, but, like, when you think about how much the trip costs and and the the fact that you have the option to... Um, I think it's kind of amazing and all the cards are different. It's like I'm getting like 10 of the same card sign and they're all going to be addressed to me. So kind of like what I was saying earlier about writing in Japanese or something, you know, what I would do when I go up to the artist is I would have this piece of paper or something similar. And what I would say is this is what I want you to write, you know, to Zach. So she can see really, really clearly Z-A-C-K. You know, I may actually even underline each letter or something or like space it out even more so she can read it. Then you got five cards. So it's like, you know, Pikachu, Jolteon, Gyarados. If you wanted to like draw a sketch or something, like just some sort of direction, but keep it within the confines of the event. Now, I, I'm not sure about the New York event, but I don't know if sketches are allowed. So um, I got to double check that. But like if, if the event doesn't allow like an like a inscription or a sketch, you know, then obviously don't ask for it. Don't go there and just try to push your way through. Um, some people go to these to make money and flip. Um, some of these go because they're just, they absolutely love the idea of getting something signed by the artist to put in your collection. You're going to be a mix of a ton of different people. Um, different people are going to have different motives. And so, um, you know, tensions can run a little high at some of these. Um, I try to stay just cool, calm, collected, let security, let, you know, the event staff just kind of run their operation. But, you know, keep your eyes and ears open. Be very, very safe. And if you have something like this to make it as easy as possible for Harada to kind of do everything, then, then it's good. And at the bottom, you know, I might write something Japanese. Thank you so much for being a part of the hobby this many years. It's incredible. Really, really appreciate it. Um, love you. <laughs> maybe not love you, but uh, who knows? Maybe she's looking for love. Who knows? Um, but, um, yeah, so kind of cool. And, um, again, the New York event, it's tickets. It's, signed, it's sold out. She's doing 15 live sketches. Um, the way the New York event works, just give some more context, they have AM and PM tickets. So if you're one of those that bought an AM and PM ticket, you show up in the AM if you have an AM on Saturday or PM if you have PM, and then they have Saturday and Sunday tickets. So I think she, there's, she's doing like 15 like live sketches, really, really cool. Um, but again, all the live ones, like none of these are gonna be Pokemon. So I, I think even for the Atlanta one, like none of them can be Pokemon. So the Pokemon companies basically said, you know, you know, we want control over our IP. We don't want really any sort of loose ends. We, our artists can go out and meet people, but you know, we really don't want them creating a bunch of stuff um, that kind of is is less controlled. So um, in, in short, like yes, she can do something on her own to kind of illustrate something, but no, she cannot even like do a Shikishi of Pokemon. Like that's just shut down. Can't do that anymore. Um, so let me show you guys a few more cards I got set aside these are kind of the last two that are kind of the heavy hitters like absolutely really really don't get these um i paid the most for this i paid about 150 i think from from artitar um love that dude he's he's like a legend of the hobby um so these are kind of two i'd really love to at some point but um everything else was like less than 50 bucks basically and then this one was like i love jolteon and i couldn't find one and sometimes you know i just want to i wanted a copy that i'll like regrade a nine I got a Pikachu, thought that was kind of cool. I know a buddy of mine wants me to bring this for him, so when he gets there, um, he can get this signed. Um, I probably won't crack this out till I get there, because, you know, sometimes people, like, say they want something they don't, and they're like, oh, I just cracked a JR Rally Pika 9, like, <laughs> don't do that. And I thought these were really cool, so um, one thing I did, I actually went through every card Harada had illustrated, and I just found, like, the coolest ones, the ones I resonated with the most. And you guys know I love Jolteon, I love the blue and the yellow, and, like, the electric, and I just thought this was just kind of really cool, a little Magneton Magnemite. So it's kind of like, you know, if we get through the line twice, like, maybe I get these, but um, my primary goal is getting the um, Watsy the uh, Aquapolis and Sky Ridge stuff signed. And then last but not least, let's say there's a crazy storm in Florida and no one shows up and they're like, hey, Zach, do you want to go through the line like 20 times? Well, yeah, I grab some more cards because why not be prepared? Why not be prepared if, um, you know, luck, when, you know, what is it? When luck meets preparation or luck is when preparation meets, I don't know, it's something like that. And so I got a couple other cool ones. Ahsoka, a really good buddy of mine, sold me some of these. So I'm very, very happy for that nice uh, deal there. And uh, I'll crack all these out and basically I'll just be ready. And when you go to actually get the card um, signed, I'm sure you'll be able to like look at people in front of you. 
Um, so I got this just kind of as an example. Um, you know, I'd have the card out of the sleeve, you know, basically ready to go. And then you want, you want the sign, the signature actually be kind of flat on the table. And it can be a little scary when they take it and they shuffle it around. You're like, oh no, edges and this and that. You know, even now you kind of see it, it um, made a little damage already. And so, but you know, let the artists do their thing. That's why getting a 10 10 on a grade for an auto is really, really hard. And um, as soon as you get the card back, you know, I would just kind of just very delicately hold it. I'd have something to set it on. I'd have a binder. I'd have something you could just set all five on. You could walk away. You don't want to be in a situation where you got like four in your hands and they're like, you know, so, so think through these things before you get there. And that way when you're presented the moment, you, you know, Eminem, like you don't freeze up. You're just, you're ready to go. Um, so both of these events, I believe they're not going to allow you to bring your own um, tools to get signed. But I actually spent a decent bit of time researching kind of the best pens to get signed. And, and really there's there's kind of two main things when it comes to like what you could get, what you could sign something with. It's kind of the width, so you have like extra fine point. And then you also have, um, like I think it's just like basically like fine point or something. Like let me look here. Yeah, I think this one might be just be like a fine line or something. And so these Art Deco pens are really, really good for reverses or something with like a glossy like surface or glossy finish. And so if you look here, you got a ton of different colors. Um, we got gold, white, black, then even like a blue. And so if you ever get something where it's like, oh, that black really doesn't shine through, well, what if you had like an Art Deco like gold just shining through like really, really bright or um, something like this. So I bought a few and I brought them just in case. Like what if the ink doesn't work? And oh, there's Zach and he's got like six pens for everyone. And so again, it's just being prepared and thinking through it. And I wanted to just show you guys like what this actually looks like. So again, it's, oh, I should, I should shake this up. So it's a blue, you shake it up. And it's like this. Then if I just sign this, and, oh man, it smells. And I'm just like, I'll just show you guys like what it actually looks like. like man, I'm not trying to be like, you know, like <laughs> whatever. But uh, you can just see how like awesome that looks. And you see it's a little wet. And so I did kind of shake it up quite a bit. But look at how nice that pops. And maybe I'd use like a different color in this, maybe like a white or something. But like if you use a general Sharpie, um, sometimes they're like they're not necessarily the best for like a card like this. Now a Sharpie on like a normal card um, actually doesn't, it actually looks pretty good and it's actually kind of okay. But if you get like a really high quality like pen like this, like an Art Deco pen, it's generally going to um, have a much better result. And you can see how nice that looks. And so again, mostly these for the reverses and stuff if you're going to do it. And um, I'll show you guys maybe just real, I haven't even opened all these up yet, but just show you guys kind of some that I have. And I want to test all these out just so I have a little bit more um, confidence in, in this before I go. And then I got these, just another brand just in case I can try these out. So um, try to do a lot of research. Hopefully this helps you guys. Um, keep in mind, just be respectful, be kind. You know, we want the artist to have a good experience as well. We want them to come back and sign more. Um, we don't want this to be Horizon's last event in, in the United States. What if she comes back and does like 10 more events? Like how awesome would that be? And so I think more cars getting signed, more cards on the market, more collectors um, kind of getting that experience is just paramount. And that's all I want. I just want you guys to have a good time. I want you to be safe and I want you guys to be prepared. So hopefully this helps. And um, I'll flash this back up so you guys see just kind of some quick tips. And until next time. All right, I'll see you guys there.